Appreciate you hitting the button. Welcome to the How to Hustle podcast with Hype. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter at I am Hype. That's H Y M P E. It's Hype. It's not Hype. I'm not geeked up. Appreciate you hitting the button. Welcome to the Hot Hustle Podcast with Hype. This is episode 123. You follow me on Instagram and Twitter at I am Hype. It's H Y M P E. It's Hype. It's not Hype. I'm not geeked up. Special guest in the building, reoccurring guest in the building. Reintroduce yourself to the audience. Yo, this is the real truth. That's all you're going to give us, yo, is this is the real truth. That's it. That's like that. That's how we're carrying it. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. Straight to the point. <laughs> Copy that. All right. Now let's hit the rundown. Custom Hustle World on Instagram is Custom Hustle Co. on Twitter. Custom jerseys, jackets, t-shirts, uh, football jerseys, basketball jerseys, baseball, hockey. Uh, you name them, we got them. Custom jackets. You design them yourself. They're one of one unless you buy five. Uh, the sneakers, the ones, the twos, and the threes. The CH1s, twos, and threes are all available. The fours are being worked on as we speak. Uh, sweatsuits, sweatshirts, however you need it. We got new merchandise coming very soon for you. Might be the week that this comes out. You never know. So why you stay tuned at Custom Hustle World on Instagram at Custom Hustle Co. on Twitter. My cleaning company is H2H Cleaning and that is at H2H Cleaning on Instagram only. We do roofing, plumbing, flooring, HVAC, cleanups, cleanouts, power wires. You got some cement jobs you need handled. We can handle that. The plumbing situations, we're not handling no septic tanks. So just let you know now before you make the call. You got some situations in-house, we can make those happen. We're not drilling any holes into your situation outside. If you need that, though, we can find a way to make a way. So we can hustle anything. <laughs> um, then we uh, go to the radio rundowns. E-Block Radio Network every Monday, 2 o'clock, E-Block Radio Network. GFT Radio Network, 2 o'clock every Tuesday. Then we 216 to blend, 12 midnight, 8 a.m., 8 p.m. on Wednesdays. And then we go, I say, podcast, radio network, Friday, 10 a.m. Shouts out to my man Is, one of those I Say Podcast Radio Network folks down there. Let him know where you're from, too. Is is international hype, not just a hashtag. It's where life. For sure, man. I'm from Newberry, South Carolina, but I, I live right now in Greenville, South Carolina. Copy that. You know, somebody hit me and said, damn, ain't you in South Carolina? I told him I am, but I'm not. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> what you mean? Right. Because I got, I got folks on the ground. You need something. If, if it makes sense, we can make it happen. Yep. <laughs> So, all right, here we go now. Episode 123. This one is culture. This is right up Izzy's alley. I knew that and knew that this is the guy for this one. Culture. Mm. When you hear the word culture is, there's a loaded statement there. What do you hear? What do you think when you hear the word culture? Um, Extinct. The culture as we knew it was a, is extinct, man. Um. I don't think it's really a culture right now. I think it's just a whole bunch of people uh, saying that what the culture is, who really should not have a voice to dictate what the culture is. I don't even know who gave them the voice in the first place, but yeah, man, I don't, I don't even see a culture right now, to be honest. So you kind of took my joint. When I hear culture, I hear it's like a negative connotation these days. Yeah. Uh, it used to be something that you would be proud of. It used to be something that uh, made you smile type thing. Now it's like, we don't know what the culture is. The mm -hmm. culture has become either so negative or just something that you don't even want to affiliate yourself with. That is mm -hmm. like, it's a confusing statement to hear these days. Yep. Like, the thing, uh, like I told you, I just talking to you about this before we started. I just watched the Rhapsody uh, join on BET and mm -hmm. It was like, you can look at this and see the difference in all the people. When everybody had their own identity, you could sell when the dudes is from the South because they got a certain look, a certain way that they talk, a certain way that they appear. You could tell when the dudes was from the West Coast. It was the same thing. Everybody had their own style. Everybody had their own thing that made them different and unique. Now, because we got the internet and we can all see each other and I can be I could be on the live and walk you straight down the block in Greenville and ain't never been there. Like, mm -hmm. but because you'd have seen it so many times, you know what I'm saying? You know the slang, you know the, the blocks, you know everything about everywhere. And it's like people got lost into who are at who is you though. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, you listening to somebody telling you about who you is, what it is, and all of that. It's like they don't even know because they was lost in a different situation. And it's like, 
everything has got just to be so watered down and just so like it's so fucking corny now. Like mm -hmm. and you hate to even say it, like, because it's like, what is the culture? I don't even know. Cause like the things that these people say, do, wear, associate themselves with are about that they stand for is like I don't even understand. I don't even want to understand. <laughs> like yeah, I had no understanding of it. I know <clears throat> a couple weeks ago, somebody asked me if I watched the award show. I'm like, bro, I ain't watched no award shows, and I can't even tell you the last time. I'm like, man, I'm used to like back in the day. I'm an '80s baby, so it's Source Awards and uh, the Soul Train Awards and the BET, the real BET Awards. Like back then when they came out and really performed, now it's just niggas a walk out, bunch of jury on, uh, high, leaned out, just walk back and forth on the stage. They might not even walk back and forth, just stay in one spot. And it's like, man, this ain't this ain't no performance. Like, I don't even want to see it. And then like the people who that they started giving awards to for albums of the year and shit like that. When I started seeing like, man, this ain't based off talent. I stopped watching it. I lost interest in it. Like, man, they just giving out bullshit. So, yeah. A lot of it is though that the talent just, it's like so watered down what is accepted as talent. So like when I did the episode with Victoria and uh, Connor, we was talking yeah. about, um, we was talking about like the artistry of the music and the versatility that he was showing. Cause I'm like, yo, was that you singing on number three? Mm -hmm. <laughs> like it sounded like you, but then I heard you was rapping on number two. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he like, nah, they both was me. Mm -hmm. People don't even like, we just was talking about this again, because this documentary is fresh in my head because I just watched it. When the booth, when they had the booth and it was separate, who can really rap from, you know, who had a hot beat and a nice producer? Like, mm -hmm. dudes ain't nobody getting in here and they can just go. Mm -hmm. Because that takes ability. That is the skill of, like, that's the wordplay and all of that. Like, not just, I got a catchy hook, I can jump around, dance, and stand in a circle. Like, so, like, But the other part of that, too, is it's some niggas who can spit but this quote unquote culture where we at now, they don't want to hear that shit. They want to hear just what you described. A beat, jumping around, uh, a bunch of just sounding like they drunk and high they mind, slurred rap. Uh that's what they want to hear now. Yeah, but that um, takes no that but see that's what I'm saying. But this is the problem when you have the wrong people telling you what molding what the culture is creating a narrative of what the culture is is that you water down a situation and then you poison the minds of everybody letting everybody think that this is hot i remember my man told me bro the words don't matter nobody care what they say that's the only part that matters like the only the part words, the words are the part that matter it's called it's music like the words are the part that makes the song hot you sometimes mm -hmm. can hear like when you know kiss got this joint about to come on and you hear a certain beat you know like uh oh he about to say some shit. Like, yep. you anticipate the, this is about to be hot. When you hear these niggas, you never anticipate that nobody is about to kill this joint. You might no. say like, oh, y'all, that joint, all right. That joint, all right, <laughs> is not yeah. something that you're going to have in your phone 20 years from now still listening to. Hell no. Unless, of course, you know, music is always time and place. Unless you like 16, and it takes you back to when you was 16. Like, mm -hmm. or when you was 23 or whatever that situation might be. But, like, mm -hmm. yeah, like, we kind of got the wrong, like, we shine so many lights on all the wrong shit. Like, we just do it. I, like, a, a, watching the joint and the boy says, like, man, it used to be when we knew somebody black was on TV, it was an event. Like, everybody's coming to the house to watch the Jackson 5 on or Run DMC is on or whatever it is. Like, we're all there to support that situation. We got to a point where now, one, we damn sure don't support each other with any of these situations. All we do is try to create some shit to demean whatever it is that you're doing because you think you better than me because you're doing that. Like, 
And Man. I don't I don't understand that type of mentality. I don't want to understand that type of mentality. And I remember this was a conversation me and you had years ago. Uh, mm. We was talking about Twitter, and you was like, "Man, there's so much negativity on there." Like, bro, that shit is all about who you following. Mm. All about who and what you following, and what are you listening to? What is influencing you? You can't do nothing about the whole world. You only yeah. can worry about your timeline. And on my yeah. timeline, I don't have none of this dumb shit because I don't give a yeah. fuck what Jada is saying for, on a 12th interview just so people could talk about this shit. I don't care. I don't care that Kanye yeah. went bankrupt. I don't care. Like. Yeah. I don't care that the chick who the chick uh she got the sex tape and oh she said her I don't care I don't even know who this girl is like Look, listen so that's, like, it's all about even, like we 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 got to do a better job of filtering the bullshit away from us because if you keep the bullshit away from you then it doesn't get into your world <laughs> nah that's that's real shit you know now. I just stay out they way, man. I've been on social media, all social media now for like six months. Best decision I ever made. Um, I caught yeah, I wind. I saw that because you had videos going up like every day, and then you just stopped. Yep, I've been on social media. I said, you know what? This shit ain't for me, man. Um, and I was watching Hard Knocks this season with the New York Jets. And I seen them, they was like, hey, uh, play that sexy red. And I'm like, what the fuck is this? They played that shit, and I started looking into it. That's when I knew, like, bro, like, music is over with. Like, when dudes start requesting that type female music. Oh, yeah, sauce. sauce. You talking it's about over. sauce. I saw that in practice. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. It, it's over with, man. <laughs> It's over. These supposed to be the hardest niggas in the country. <laughs> it's over, man. It's over. Like back in the day, don't get me wrong. I fuck with Lil Kim, Foxy Brown, now. But you never see me walk up in the club or a party and be like, "Hey, put that Kim on." I fuck with it if she featured on Biggie's verse or something with Bad Boy, but I'm not. No dude, I see dudes even pulling up at the gas station playing sexy red, man. And I'm like, boy, we're done. It's so good. Yeah. <clears throat> that's what I'm saying. I, I can't relate. I don't want to relate, and that's cool. Um, yeah. That's what you're doing. If you're listening to this and that's what you're doing, we appreciate you hitting the button. We only accept five stars, but that's not the move. <laughs> um, like, yeah. yeah, like I, I uh, damn, that's a rough one. Um I could just imagine, like, because I remember I, all I'm seeing when you say Lil' Kim is the hardcore cover. And like, yeah. <laughs> yep. Yep. Yeah. Ah, yeah. that's a rough joint. All right. So now, uh, again, again, with the social media thing, me and you, we met straight, straight off social media. Y'all was doing the mm-hmm. lives. I was jumping in on them joints. Like I said, the social media is all about how you filter it. I can follow mm-hmm. you and mute your dumb ass if I think that you got some BS content coming on. Because like <laughs> yeah. I said, you was coming every day. You had clips every day of the show that you had, the traction going and all of that. Don't let the BS of somebody else affect what you're trying to do. You got something you're trying to get out there, the message that you want to deliver. Don't let the BS of the culture fuck you up in that situation because you're delivering a message that niggas need to hear. Shit, man. It's like this, man. The Bible say, don't uh, share your pearls with swine. And man, I was dropping jewels on niggas' heads. But when I'm seeing like the most of people want to share, talk about that's getting attraction that people are tuning into is bullshit. And I'm like, man, I don't want to be a part of any of any of this. And again, like. Social media, man, it take up so much. It was taking up so much of my time. And then people emailing me and DMing me talking about, I don't agree with what you're saying. And, you know, like it became an issue for you to have an opinion. Like everybody else could say what they want to say. But if I say something, then it's like, oh, hell no. Like, so I'm like, man, let me get off here. My old lady, she's still on there. But nah, man, I cut it loose. I never come back to social media. Fuck social media. Yeah. See, all right. See, this is the the good. See, this, I mean, like like everything, it's the gift and the curse. Yeah. Man, you don't cultivate this relationship that we got because we got yeah. each other phone numbers. 
You know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> so I never understand. I got your phone number. Why we DMing? But you know, different situ- <laughs> different situations with different folks. Um, right. We don't cultivate the relationship that we got from states across for years. If you yeah. won't find, it's too many people. The one thing about it is being able to connect with different people from everywhere that think just like you, or that move right. just like you, or who even if we don't agree, we can agree to disagree as long as we do it with respect. And mm-hmm. people can say like, "Oh, I don't like." Somebody told me like, "No, I don't like the uh, the threes, the third version of the snakes." Like, "No, I don't like." I hate them panda type Jones. That's cool. That's your opinion. I'm not offended. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I've I've turned episodes into somebody disagreeing with something that I said. All right, you hit me and say I don't like that. Don't even tell me all about that right now. This is an episode. We're gonna yeah. turn this into some content. We're gonna turn this into a situation. And again, if we both come with respect to the situation. Like I don't have we not don't agree on everything because we're right. not the same person, which is perfectly fine. As long as we show respect to each other, uh, then everything should be good as far as that go. All I'm saying is, like I said, I know you was doing them joints. I know, like I said, me and you became cool because of you doing a show. Mm-hmm. I'm all the way the hell up here. I'd have never knew about the show if not for social media, if not for me just going, man, these niggas is cool. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. oh, these niggas is funny. Oh damn, that's yeah. crazy. Or that happened up here. Or like you know what I'm saying, like, don't let don't let the outside BS deter you. Like I said, if you got a message that you feel like I need to deliver or I need to do, it's always gonna be some negativity. It's always gonna be some BS, whether it's on social media or not. This is a nigga at the gas station that you come to every day who don't like you. Nigga yeah. really see you rolling up and he go, This nut ass nigga, here he come. <laughs> it's gonna always be that. So, you know what I'm saying? Don't let that shit. Don't let that shit break the message that you want to deliver to the world. Because I know even with the artistry, with the music and shit, you still got a message that you want to deliver. Like, no, nah, I, nah, I don't even fuck with the music no more. Hell oh, no, no, we're getting into the music too. Yeah, just to let you know, we got a couple of tracks that we're going to tap into and you're going to break those down in case you were uninformed before the yeah. interview. <laughs> <laughs> so now, since he went there, we're going there right now. Let me see, let me see what I got on my list right here. I need to know about this track right here. For y'all who don't know, is also does music, even though he just said some bullshit that we're not listening to. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> he got a call from the hood and said it was fucked up. Still my dude. Yeah. Overdose. Talk to me about overdose. Uh shit, man. It was that song was damn probably six, seven years old, and I just put it out probably last year because um, people kept telling me, man, you got to drop this, you got to drop this, but I wanted to do the visual, and I knew the visual might, it might trigger people in a certain way, but it's just what it was about, man. Like, um, I fought addiction for a while. I was addicted to pills. Um, I almost lost everything I worked hard for behind it. And, you know, I got around good people. I was able to get off of it. Um, But then when you look and you see, like, things going on around in the world, sometimes you get in that dark space and you can't figure out, like, how you want to get out of it. And anybody who done dealt with addiction, you know, like, when you're in the middle of that storm, you get so deep into it, you know what it's doing to your body, you know what it's doing to your mind. But you might consciously say, hey, I'm about to take these, but please don't let me overdose. Please don't let me die when you could just not take it. And you won't even have to worry about that. You know what I'm saying? But that addiction on your ass so hard, you just willing to roll the dice like, hey, I'm going to take it. But please don't let me overdose. Let me let me make it through. So my man sent me the beat. And um, we just, we put that shit down. And like I said, I sat on it for years. Like, never put the shit out. And um, we saw it in the vault. Like, shit, man, let's put this out. Let's do a visual. My girl, she uh, she wrote the treatment for the video. Um, shout out my man, Merv. Jim Complex, he shot the video. Uh, so, yeah, man, that's that's overdose. Um. I got so much that I want to say, but I don't want to do this on this episode because this is a different episode that we're doing. Spoiler right. alert, I just told you that. Um, <laughs> something, uh, damn. I'm not going here. 
because like I said, uh, this is a whole nother episode that we going to do. And mm -hmm. I'm give you the setup for that once we get done this one. But okay. uh, I wanted to throw that out there though, because I fucked with the, like you said, once you've seen the visual and all of that, um, it makes it come to life and all of that. Uh, that was a good joint. I fucked with that one. And like Appreciate I always it. told you, the first music you ever sent me, 2000 and I say like 18, was that mm. joint. I got a call from the hood say it's fucked up. That was the yeah. first track on that joint. And yeah. like, yo, I bang that shit all the time. That was my shit. <laughs> uh, appreciate it. One more now, guys. I say that to you every time I talk to you, though. Like I told you, that was my shit. Mm -hmm. um, this one now. I told Victoria about this when we talked the last time. Pop. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, man, Pop was like, uh, it's about my dad. I lost my dad at 16. He got killed in a car wreck. And um, me and my dad, man, we, we, I love my dad. I know he loved me. He just wasn't one of them people who would be, he'd tell you like he loved you. It's just, you felt that he showed it in ways, but he never would say it. But, you know, me being a, a, a young, dumb kid, um, I was into a lot of shit. And my dad, you know, he was religious. He had transformed his life. and He was religious. And, you know, he was telling me, like, he had caught me doing a couple of things. And he said, hey, if if you bring drugs in this house again, like, I'm putting you out, you know. And this is when I'm at 16. Uh, he was like, you're going to have to go. So I'm doing my thing. I'm getting off the porch trying to sell drugs, doing whatever I'm doing. And uh, I lost him at that pivotal point. And the Monday that he got killed, I was gone that whole week. I had kind of left home. Um, the only reason I came back is because my homeboy, who I was living with him and his grandma at the time, she was like, you need to go home and work that out with your dad. And like, you're technically a minor. Like, I can't let you just keep staying here. You know what I'm saying? Um, so I came home that Sunday. He was waiting up. And, you know, we kind of talked. Um, we didn't get into anything major, but he was just like, you know, uh, always take care of your mother. You know, always be a man. It's, it's like he sent something was coming because um, he, he gave me a quick, run down of everything he had been trying to tell me the previous 15 years. And, uh, you know, he, he passed away the next day and I ain't gonna say we, he passed away with us on bad terms, but we wasn't on the best of terms. You know what I'm saying? You and it was just me. Situation yeah. It was just me becoming into teens and doing shit. And, and, um, so, when he passed away, there was I never really talked about it. Um, I never really expressed any kind of emotion around it. It was just like, hey man, you know, I lost my pops. And one of my homeboys, he been telling me for years, bro, you need to you need to drop some music about your pops. And I'm like, nah, man, I ain't I ain't never speaking on that. And probably about a year ago, he was like, man, he was like, I know. Uh, when you feel it, you do music. He was like, but man, I really think you can make something crazy if you just talk about your pops. And he kept saying it. So I'm like, man, I'm going to do it. And so again, um, got the beat. We put it together. Um, my girl, she put the video treatment together and we just put now, it I out. Told, I told her, salute to her for the video. Uh, yeah. Cause she brought all of that down for me. So I mm -hmm. told her, like, nah, the, the fact that you put that much time, energy, and effort into it, and that wasn't even her project. Uh, oh, yeah. But I know, like, we had a whole thing about <laughs> we let her go about you. So yeah. like, the last time I had them on. But yeah, I told yeah. her, though, like, I said, yo, I'm looking at the detail in the background, and I'm like, damn, that shit took a while. She like, I did every one of those my damn self. Yep. Hell yeah, yeah. Like, I think, I think it took her three, four days. She did, yeah. That's what she said, yeah. 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 Uh, again, uh, I lost my dad when I was twenty-two, so mm. 
them type joints uh, and shit. I look at 22 like, damn, I ain't really get that much time with him. used to 16. So, yeah. you know, I know how them situations hit. Um, yeah. But yeah, I was another joint. Like, them's my type joints, like the pain music type joints. Because again, mm-hmm. you have to tell a story. You have to craft it. You have to make the person feel the song. Once you get mm-hmm. the visuals, then it makes you feel like the time, place, and it puts you in a space. But that mm-hmm. takes talent, ability, and it's the artistry there that everybody mm-hmm. can't do. You're not yeah. just talking over a beat. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So again, salute to you. Like I said, I had a couple in the chamber that I needed I needed the backstory on those. Um mm-hmm. so now before we wrap up episode 123, you got anything that you want to throw out there? Because I don't want to hear this. I'm not doing no music shit that you just told me. That's not flying. Mm-hmm. So like man, <laughs> with me, man, like um, I just been working on man my spirituality, bro, to keep it one all the way real, just taking care of my family, and like I say, working hard, trying to stay out of the way. I'm trying to start a company. Um, you know, in a year or two, I want to have a trucking school. Like I want to, I have a school where people can come and get their CDL license, and you know, so that's really what I'm working on, trying to put that in motion right now. But um. Man, it ain't really too much. Uh, people been hitting me like, bro, when you go get back to pot? And it, it, I just don't have the 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 love for it no more. Like, it ain't something I want to do. Um, I'm looking at what I can do to leave a legacy for my family. And I think I got so much content, so much music that's out, shit still in the vault. They always go have a piece of me and always have those stories and music and memoirs and all of that. I don't need to focus on that type of content no more because, number one, it wasn't bringing me no money, like not no real money. And in this day and age, that's what you need to be looking at. How can I build something that's going to leave some real money for my family? And that's what I'm focusing on right now. But I just encourage everybody, man. Um. Hey man, get get your get your stuff in order. Um, find some kind of spiritual connection with a higher power, man. If you if if you paying attention to anything that's going on in the world, if you ain't been oblivious, if you watching what's happening, you know this world can't be like this forever. Not too much longer. God is gonna punish the world, like America in general, because of all this bullshit that's happening that people are doing, saying, like, it's a debauched time that we live in. So it's time for, you know, really to to look at any past traumas, any past relationships that are strained, fix them, address the traumas, go to therapy, do whatever you got to do. Find you some peace, man, and a a spiritual connection with the higher power Um, and knowledge yourself because you're going to need it. If you don't have it here soon, Hey, this shit go down, tear you up mentally. So now it's time to really just get your mental in order, like strengthen your mental um, and everything else will fall into place. But work to fix that, man. Copy that. You threw a lot at us right there to end the show. Is you know, I fucks with you, bro. Appreciate you uh-huh. for coming on. It's episode 123. We are. Oh, I am hype. That's H Y M P E. It's hype. It's not hype. I'm not geeked up. Feel it, feel it.